Better late than never. Okay. Um, now I'm recording. Remember, I am posting these up on the uh, Canvas page in case you want to review it later. Um, so repetition is loud. Order doesn't matter. I kind of previewed this on Tuesday by saying that your mother sends you to the grocery store to purchase, I don't know, 20 pieces of fruit. And uh, she wants to have peaches, apples, and oranges. But she doesn't care what order you pick them up from the uh, grocery store in, nor uh, do these peaches, apples, or oranges look different from each other, right? All the peaches look the same, all the apples look the same. And so we're gonna assume that, of course, that's not really true. <laughs> when you go to the store, I'm sure you pick and choose, but um, you kind of get what I'm saying. So let's just set that up as, a, as an example. And then we'll talk about how to this time, okay? Because we haven't really seen these yet. So as, a, as an example, I'm going to assume an unlimited supply. I have to go to the grocery store late at night, so this isn't even a fair assumption. Mm -hmm. Usually I'm like picking the last uh, stuff off the shelf. Um, uh, unlimited supply of identical apples, oranges, and bananas. Just do that. So we have an unlimited number of uh, any of those fruits, okay? And so the question that we're gonna ask here is how many ways are there, how many ways are there, how many ways are there to select 18 pieces of fruit? This is what I want to talk about. This is the kind of question that we that we're gonna have. Okay. Um, and again, it doesn't matter what order we pick these pieces of fruit up in, nor uh, are we limited in repeating the same object more than once. Nikolai. Is there a minimum for each? Nope, not not as of now. Uh, we're gonna throw some twists into this uh, in a little while, but for right now it's just no constraints here. No constraints at all. So um, I'm going to suggest as an idea for how to solve this problem that we develop a little secret communication system where certain outcomes can be kind of written in a manner that is maybe a little more reminiscent of counting things, uh, combinatorics in the way that we traditionally think of it. So I'm going to create a little communication system here. You'll see what I mean. It's quite, quite nice, actually. So the communication system is going to be something like this. I'll give you an example of the communication system. Let's suppose that we want to have uh, nine apples, six oranges, and three bananas. So th this would be one possible outcome, right? But instead of like just writing it like that, I'm gonna write it in a slightly different way. I'm gonna write it like the following. I am going to draw a bunch of little asterisks here or stars, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then I'm gonna draw a bar, just like a divider. And then I'm gonna draw six more stars. And then I'm gonna draw another bar. And then I'm gonna draw three more stars. And if your mom sends you to the store to purchase these uh, uh, numbers of apples, oranges, and bananas, right? Uh, as long as you've communicated with her ahead of time that you're going to put apples kind of into a, a, a bin first, and then the oranges into a bin after that, and then the bananas into the third bin, then if you saw, if your mother handed you this little scrap of paper with this on it, right, that basically communicates uh, how you're supposed to uh, uh, go to the store and buy the fruit, right? Nine apples, six oranges, and three bananas, okay? Just as, a, as another example, suppose that it was a zero apples, um, one orange, and 17 bananas. That would be another acceptable uh, arrangement. And so for something like that, 
you know, we could try to write down a corresponding sequence of, this is called kind of stars and bars sequence here. Stars and bars. It's just a sequence of stars and bars. So when we're thinking about combinations of multi-sets, right? When we're thinking about repetition allowed, order doesn't matter. I want us thinking about this stars and bars approach, right? So I bet that you can figure out how to write down what this is supposed to look like. We have no apples, so there's no stars in the beginning. We're gonna go right to a bar. Then we have one orange, so there would be one star for that, and then we right away go to another bar. And then we would have 17 of these stars, if I have the energy to do it. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. It might look like that, right? So that would be the way it would look if you were going to get no apples, one orange, and 17 bananas. So the idea is that, you know, instead of kind of having to think about the physical problem in such a direct way, we can translate this problem into sequences of stars and bars. And what you notice here, of course, is that we always will have 18 stars total. The stars are representing the pieces of fruit. And we will always have two bars. And that's because there are three types of objects and I need two bars to separate the bins. So you're creating three bins by using two bars. That's kind of what's going on, right? So the number of bars is always going to be sort of one less than the number of types of objects that you're choosing uh, in uh, the number of types of objects that are in the multi-set, right? The number of different types of objects. So yeah, so let me just say that uh, maybe as, as a remark here, and then we'll actually finish solving this problem, right? Um, that each selection of fruit is in a correspondence. I'm going to draw like this arrow, arrow to show that there's a correspondence between each selection of fruit and a sequence of stars and bars. Uh, in this case, um, there would be 18 of these stars and there would be two bars. Okay, and so the, then the question is, well, what's the answer to this problem now? We're really counting how many of these sort of secret codes could we, could we write down. Every one of them has 20 stars and, I'm sorry, 18 stars, 18 stars and, sorry, two bars. 18 stars and two bars, right? <laughs> So does anybody have a thought what that's going to be? How many of these sequences would we have? Yeah, go ahead, um, Julie. Since we have both secrets and bars, we have 20 things, mm -hmm. and we can place either the 18 stars or the two bars. So, so 20 choose 18. There we go. So guys, a total of 20 positions in this string, right? There's a total of 20 positions, and we can think of choosing two of them to put the bars, or we can think of choosing 18 of them to put the stars. This is the same thing, right? Once you've chosen where you're putting the stars, then the remaining spaces must be put with bars and vice versa. So let's write that down, right? So the number of such sequences is, I'm going to start by writing it in a really informal way, which is it's all of the stars plus bars. So you take however many total of those objects that you're supposed to have, and you're going to put bars down here. You're going to choose the bars. So this is a combination. I'm happy that it's a combination since that's the title of the section. It's about combinations. But of course, if you prefer... As Julie pointed out, it's also okay to instead choose the stars. It's also okay to choose the stars. And there might be some situations where there it where one of these is a better way to think about it because 
Um, you might have some constraints. We don't have any constraints right now, but you might have some constraints later where the number of stars is continually changing, right? In which case, the number on the bottom here is like not not constant, but maybe you always have two bars, right? So then it's I I tend to like to use the bars on the bottom, but it works it works either way. Okay, so um, just to maybe make this slightly more notationally uh, rigorous for a math class, uh, let me give some notation here. Uh, let's let little r be equal to the number of stars. This is really just the number of objects that we are choosing right now, 18 pieces of fruit. And then I'm going to let k, I'm going to let k be the number of types of objects. So in this case, we have three types of objects, which are the apples, oranges, and bananas. So just to be really clear here, the number of bars is actually k minus one, right? Because, you know, like here, we only have two bars, even though there were three types of fruit. So you subtract one from that. And so in this case, what we could say then, let's actually state this now as a theorem, and then we'll finish the problem. Theorem 2.5.1 is uh, just the theorem about uh, how many ways there are to, to do problems like this. So let's let S be a multiset, right, with K types of objects. So K is just the, how many types of objects that we have. We're going to call that K. Um, each in infinite supply. I know some of you are thinking, well, what if you go into the store and there's only 15 apples left at 11 o'clock at night when I go in there, right? So then that's a constraint. And you might say, well, the first, uh, the, the number of stars in the first bin can be at most 15. So of course we're gonna address those kinds of variations on this problem in just a minute. But for right now, Let's just assume we have as many of these uh, objects as we want. Okay, uh, then the number of R combinations, so we're, we're choosing R of the objects in total. So this is an R combination. The number of R combinations of S is... Okay, so I'm basically just going to write down what I wrote in informal words over here. Stars plus bars, so that's just going to be R plus K minus 1, and I'm going to choose K minus 1 bars, or I could just as well take R plus K minus 1 and choose R, right? They're the same number. Either one of those will be the same value, and so that's, that is our theorem. So in the example above, In the example above, the answer would just be uh, 18 plus 2, choose 2. Uh, 20, choose 2. That's the number of ways that you could pick up 18 pieces of fruit uh, among an unlimited supply of apples, oranges, and bananas. Okay. Um, are there any questions so far? Yeah, Julie. When I was doing the practice problem, like the one with the 10 to, or no, 10 to the power of 6 with the teachers and students, yeah, I originally thought it was kind of like this, where we had 10 sections of teachers, and then we were facing the students in like different categories. Okay. Why wouldn't that work? Um, so you make a bin for each professor, yeah. and then you're like putting... So the, <laughs> the reason that that's not... I mean, maybe there's a way to make it work. But the problem in my mind is that the objects that, you know, you'd be putting stars into these bins, but the stars have to all be identical, right? Oh, so okay. all the apples look the same, all the oranges look the same, and so on. But here we have six different looking people being assigned into 10 apple advisors. So that would be so the big issue. Yeah. yeah, you'd have to like, you'd have to like solve it this way. Imagine it's six identical twins that are 
being advised uh, by 10, you have 10 faculty advisors. Um, and you got six identical twins, so they all look the same. Uh, and then you could like put the, them into these bins and then you'd have to like take out the order. But taking out the order would be on a case-by-case -case basis. And that, I don't think it would be easy yeah. to just like take the order off of that kind of a problem. Okay. So it's a good thought yeah. though. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, so that's kind of a basic version of the problem. Now, what I'd like to do is discuss how we can handle variations of this problem. What if your mom said that she wants at least three oranges and at least four bananas? So you're gonna buy these pieces of fruit, but she's got like these, like somebody was asking earlier about minimum requirements. This would be uh, an example of a constraint that is expressed as a minimum requirement. So here we go, how many ways to buy 18 pieces of fruit um, if we must buy how many ways to buy 18 pieces of fruit if we must buy at least three oranges and at least four bananas. Okay. So you could be thinking of it as, well, I've got to put three stars in the oranges bin and four bananas into the, four stars into the bananas bin right away. And you could just do that. Um, but, you know, if I'm putting them into my diagram, then they're going to be contributing to, then it's like I'm making choices there. Like, cause they're gonna beef up this number on top. You're gonna have more stars than you really have a choice to make among them, right? You don't have 18 pieces of fruit that you're picking up. You're only gonna be, I mean, you are picking up 18 pieces of fruit, but you don't have a choice about seven of them anyway, right? So here is the better way to think about that problem. Imagine yourself in this position. You're going into the store. You have to buy 18 pieces of fruit, but you also must have at least three oranges and at least four bananas. If I was forced to do that, what I would do is I would walk into the store. I would pick up three oranges. I would pick up four bananas. I would take them right back out to my car. So far, I have not made any choices, right? I just grabbed what I was required to grab. I grab all that stuff. I take it out to my car. And then I say, ah, now I can go back in and have free range to do whatever I want with the other 11 pieces of fruit, right? You essentially are just going to knock these numbers down. So out of 18, you're gonna knock three of them off and four of them off. That's seven numbers coming off of 18, which means you have 11 pieces of fruit left that you can now go back and solve a problem just like the original one, but instead of 18, it's just with 11. Does that make sense? So you're not making any choices in, in the first place about the oranges or the bananas. You're just gonna take those out to the car uh, before you get anywhere and then go back in. And that's when your choices start is after you go back in. So let's write that down and see if it makes sense once we've written it down. And then I'll take questions, of course. So after meeting the requirements, on oranges and bananas. So after meeting the requirements on oranges and bananas, we we'll take care of that first. Um, we need 11 more um, fruits. And this time now with no constraints, no more, no additional constraints. So with no constraints, guys, we're not putting anything in order. The three oranges that you uh, purchased initially and then went out to your car with, right? By the time you get home, you will not be able to tell those three oranges apart from any additional oranges that you might now purchase in the remaining 11 fruits. Okay, so we're, we're not 
keeping track of that. If we try to keep track of that, we get a bigger answer, right? So we don't want to do that. So this is it. This is just a new problem with 11 stars and still the two bars, just like before. So the answer here, the answer this time is going to be 11 stars plus two bars, choose two. Or again, we could also do it as, um, well, so sorry, this is 13, choose two. We could also do that as 11 plus two, choose 11. Okay, so you have 13 spaces and you're going to fill those with um, stars and bars. So okay. the final answer is 13, choose two? Yep. That's it. That's it. So we don't have to make any choices on the meeting the requirements part. We literally just can get away with um, without considering that. Really not coming up too easy. Okay, I'm not going to address that right now. Um, let me see the. The natural next question is, well, what if you're supposed to take at most uh, a certain number of fruits, right? So the at least condition is easy to solve. We just, uh, you know, we just knock off some of the stars. You see that that's what we did, right? So this is 11, so it's really clear that's 18 minus 7, right? We've subtracted the seven um, oranges and bananas that we were required to take. But let's do another example now where it's a slightly different kind of constraint. Um, how many how many ways oops, how many ways to buy uh, eighteen pieces of fruit? Um, if we must buy at most nine bananas. Let's just say that's the constraint, at most nine bananas. So everybody needs to be carefully reading these words. Uh, the for example we just finished was at least a certain number of some of the fruit, now I'm doing the uh, opposite problem at most. Of course, we could also have them combined together. It, it could be at least six apples, but at most nine bananas. But let's just start with just treating this as an individual problem on its own. I'm wondering if anybody has a idea how we would maybe think about this one. Uh, Fernando, hold on a second. Anybody else have an idea? <laughs> you were you were just a little fast. You're okay. Yes, Maria. And then taking those and then you could try eight and then seven. So you could add cases. You could do a bunch of cases where one case you specifically do take nine bananas. And then no, no more bananas. So if, if that was the case, if this said exactly nine bananas, right, what I would do is I would go out, get the nine bananas, take them to the car, then I'd go back in. But when I go back in, I only want oranges and apples. So I would actually at this point only have one bar because I would be done with the I would be done with the bananas, right? And so we could do a stars and bars for that. And then we could do another stars and bars with eight bananas and seven and so on. So that would work, but that is going to take a while. Uh, Maddie. Yeah, at least, how many bananas? I like this. Take the total, take the total, right? That was the answer to the original problem, right? This is the total with no constraints. Just buy at least 18 pieces of fruit and let's subtract violations. What would be a violation here? 10 or more bananas, right? In other words, how many ways are there to buy 18 pieces of fruit if we buy at least 10 bananas? And to handle the at least business, we already kind of learned how to do that. That's easy. We just wipe off some stars, right? So we would wipe off 10 stars, I think, yeah. right? 
Yeah. So that would knock the total uh, number down to 20. And see, we still have two bars. This is why I like to put the bars down here. I said over here that you can do, you can choose the bars or you can choose the stars. But see, I like to choose the bars because the bars don't change, right? That's a problem, or a lot of these problems. Whereas the number of stars is changing because here, oh, and I, right, so here I have, um, only eight more pieces of fruit to buy. Mm -hmm. So there's only eight stars here, whereas there were originally 18. Mm -hmm. There's still two bars, so that's why this goes up to 10. But this is this is violations that we're subtracting here, which would be at least 10 bananas. Does that make some sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's how you do the at most condition. So you just uh, subtract the violations. So that kind of handles that. Um, maybe we could do, do one where there's a, both of the constraints involved just to kind of see, make sure we're not getting confused on how to deal with that. So we'll do one more example of this and then I'll get away from my grocery store uh, <laughs> analogy for a little while. Um, you know, one of, one of the hard parts, of course, about this is, is, again, when you're seeing another problem in another context, you have to identify that it is a stars and bars problem. So think about all the examples we've been doing, right? So the, the grocery store with the fruit example is great for repetition allowed and order doesn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. But then, you know, if I'm going back to photographs of people standing in a picture, well, now again, that's repetition um, not allowed and order does matter, right? For a, for a photograph, order does matter and repetition is not allowed. So that's a to totally different kind of problem. Then you've got the, the uh, poker hands, right? The playing cards where you've got order doesn't matter, but repetition is not allowed, right? So there's a good exercise really is to take some new problem that you're shown because that's what you're going to see throughout the semester. I'm going to keep giving you different new examples, right? You have to figure out, well, which problem is this like? Like, what does it remind me of? So, you know, should I be using stars and bars or should this be some kind of like a permutation or what is it, right? So that that's the, that's maybe part of what the challenge is here. But let's try one more example of this, okay? And then we'll, we'll move on. So how many ways um, to buy 18 pieces of fruit, right? 18 pieces of fruit with, um, let's say at least five oranges and at most, um, seven bananas. <clears throat> so now I've got at least and at most mixed into the same example. So we can practice all of it at once, right? That's what I'm hoping we can do here. So let's try it. Um, any thoughts on how I might uh, start this thing off? If I need to by buying the five oranges. I, I would take care of that part of it first, right? The five oranges, that's five stars that you're just going to immediately wipe off from the total. So instead of having 18 pieces of fruit to buy, it's only 13 pieces of fruit to buy. So um, we're going to have 13 plus two, choose two. This is, you know, um, at least five oranges. So that means that we now have only 13 stars and still two bars. I'll just write the bars and stars with symbols there to, to show that. Okay, so that would be how many ways there are. That's 15, choose two. That's how many ways there are to uh, buy 18 pieces of fruit that have at least five oranges. Now from those, I want to subtract out, I want to subtract out the arrangements that have at, at least more. eight bananas, right? Yeah. Now, more. keep in mind though, we're not subtracting out from the total unrestricted problem, right? Subtracting. Notice I'm subtracting out from something that's already been cut down. 
So here I'm going to be thinking about subtracting a situation where I've already gotten rid of five of the uh, stars. I'm only looking at eight, uh, sorry, at 13 stars. And now I'm saying I'm gonna have at least eight bananas, right? So out of those 13 stars, I now take eight more of them away. That leaves me with only five stars left. Still have two bars. And so I add the bars in this, and the uh, choosing the bars here. So this is um, at least five oranges and at least eight bananas. It's very important that, you know, we're subtracting, since we're subtracting from this already reduced number, we don't want to, we don't want to go back and, and um, allow there to be fewer than five oranges. We don't want to subtract from the unconstrained problem at all. So this just gives us an answer then, right? 15 choose two minus seven choose two. That look okay? That would be that would be it. So we can combine these conditions together um, pretty easily as well. Okay. Um, let's try a couple more, a couple more examples, and then yeah, I think by next week we're going to. By the way, once we're done with this chapter, we're going to jump to chapter five and start talking about um, combinatorial identities which includes things like Pascal's triangle and the binomial theorem, uh, stuff like that, that in, in large part does involve these combinations again, but they tend to be, tend to be slightly more mathematical and less you know, real world problem oriented. So I think we're just about ready for that. But let me give you a, just another example of a type of problem where stars and bars would show up, okay? This is kind of an interesting one as well. Uh, so here's a totally different example. Now we'll get away from the grocery store and try something different. Um, let's uh, consider the equation. So I'm going to make an equation now this time. And this is going to be x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x5 plus x6 equals 17. And what I'm going to ask you here is how many solutions? And the solutions I'm referring to, you know, the X's, X1, X2, X3, X4, X5, and X6. So these are six tuples of, of numbers, but we are going to be kind of picky here. How many solutions X1 through X6 with Xi an element of, uh, let's just say, the positive, the non-negative integers. So this is why it's a common in a combinatorics class and not the, you know, well, if if we weren't just asking for integer solutions here, then this wouldn't be a combinatorics problem at all. It's not really discrete at all. So yeah, so I would like to find solutions here that involve whole numbers. Whole num no fractions, no irrational numbers, no negative numbers, just values that are at least zero. So, you know, one example of a solution would be, um, you know, so just to sort of visualize what's going on, we could have, you know, one and then two and then six and then four and then one and then um, three. And that would be one way to do this. So you add up these numbers. I hope I did it right. <laughs> I think I did. All right. So one. So one solution would just be one comma two comma six comma four comma one comma three. That's one answer to the problem. Okay. Um, but I'm kind of wondering if there would be a way to use what we've just been learning to think about how many solutions we could have here. Yeah, go ahead. So we have 17 stars. Uh huh. And then we're distributing them into each of the boxes. Which are representing the variables. Yeah, I like that. So we have like an X1 box, right? <laughs> separated from an X2 box, separated from an X3 box, and so on. We use these bars to divide the boxes up. And notice again that we have one less bar than we do terms of the, of the 
of the equation on the left because there's six variables and we're going to just distribute them into these these places. So um, yeah, so this solution that I just drew on the board would look like this. You have one star in the x1 box, two stars are going here in the x2 box, then there would be six of them here, right? And then the next box would have four of them. And the fifth box would just have one. And then the next box would just have three of them. So that would be a visualization of one of our solutions, right? And so the answer to this problem, very simple, it's just 17 stars, adding to that five bars, and we're going to choose the bars. So 22 choose five, right? That's the total number of ways of doing that. Pretty neat. So that's a, another place that you can do applications. Another thing you can do, of course, you could have, you could ask how many solutions are there where X1 is at least three. That's just saying, oh, I have to have at least three apples. So you just take out the, the, the three from the 17, right? You just imagine that you've already put three of the 17 stars in the first 10, and you go in and you start over. Right. And you just do it that way. So you can you can handle these at least and at most problems with this kind of a question in the same way as what we had just, just discussed. That's kind of the stars and bars story. Uh, I will leave it to you to start thinking about some problems about that. That'll be for next week. But this is kind of where we're going to leave it off for today. Start chapter five next week already. During week four already. Or chapter five. I'm doing more than one chapter a week. <laughs> all right have a great weekend everybody stop by my office hours if you'd like to i'll be around